Hello everyone, this is Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com and now let's start part two of our tutorial series of AJAX. So in the previous tutorial, we set up our function that we want to call load and in this function, we are going to send two parameters, the ID and the URL. So the URL is whatever we want to go and grab on our server and the ID is the div ID of where we want to place that text or the, what, whatever is in that HTML file. So, in this function, now we are going to start writing some AJAX. So the first thing you always do whenever you're writing AJAX is you need to create an object that is going to go out and get the request that we want. So we want to go out and get the URL ajaxtest.html. But in order to go out there and get it, we need to have an AJAX object. So this AJAX object needs to be con configured so that whatever user is looking at our page can go out and get that request. So the AJAX object needs to be slightly configured differently depending on what kind of browser the user is using because they will go out and send requests and get them differently depending on which browser they are using. So now that you have a slight rundown of what we want to do, we're going to write it all out and then I'm going to explain it again. So just write this and then I will explain it. So in our JavaScript function, let's say var AJAX object is assigned no. And then we're going to do one, two if statements. So the first one is going to be if the window of the browser accepts XML HTTP requests, then we want to configure our AJAX object this way. So we will configure it like AJAX object is assigned new XML HTTP request. So we will configure it for that specific browser. But if the user's um, browser takes window.active x objects, then we want to configure our Ajax object differently. So we want to say Ajax object is assigned new active x object. And then in the braces, we want to say Microsoft dot XML HTTP. So what we are doing is we are first initializing our Ajax object to null. And as I said, we need this Ajax object to go out and grab our request. So this is what's going to go out and get that request for us. So depending on what the user's browser is, what the user is using as their browser, they will be able to go out and get that request differently. All modern browsers will trigger this if statement. If the user is using Firefox, any of the Internet Explorers after Internet Explorer 8, uh, Chrome, Opera, any modern browser uses XML HTTP requests. So this first if statement will be triggered and then our AJAX object would be configured to be able to get requests this way. But some of the older browsers utilize an, a uh, request to do ActiveX objects like Internet Explorer 6 or Internet Explorer 7. So if the user is using any of those older browsers, they will need to have their AJAX object configured differently. And again, the purpose of this AJAX object is to be able to go out and get that request for us. So I hope that makes sense. Now, let's think of an, an, of an instance. What happens if the user is not using any of the modern browsers and they are not using any of the later versions of Internet Explorer like 6 or 7. What if they're using something like Internet Explorer 5 or something? They're really in the past. Well, then somehow we need to be able to tell them that they do not have a modern browser in order to do this Ajax object. So what, we, what would happen if they had that kind of browser was it would initialize Ajax object to null it would check this if statement, that would be false, so it wouldn't do the body, and then it would check this if statement, that would be false, and it wouldn't do the body. So Ajax object would still be null. So what we want to say here is we want to say if Ajax object does not equal null, then in here we will do all of the code that we want to in order to go out and get that request. But what if the user does not have a good Ajax object? Then we shouldn't do any of that code. So all we have to do is say else, and then we can just do an alert that says you do not have a 
compatible browser for this action. So basically, if they have an AJAX object configured, so if one of these if statements was triggered and the, if, and the AJAX object is no longer null, then we will put all of that juicy information of how we will actually go out and get that request in here. But if the user already has an AJAX object that is no good, then we don't want to do any of that. And we will just alert them and say, we're sorry, but you do not have a browser that can take this request. So this is a good way to check if the user should be able to do this or not. So I hope you guys understand the purpose of an AJAX object and why we need to configure it in order to get that request. So in the next video tutorial, we are going to talk about what's going to go into this body. So how we will actually go out and get that request. So thank you for watching. This has been Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com and I hope this tutorial was useful.